Yeah, definitely so with Otto Wamna and Jankos here from HK after securing first place in the group. Maybe Otto Wamna, you first. Um, let's talk about expectations coming into the day. Jankos had said, well, we definitely want to get to quarters, but this exceeds a lot of the fans' expectations. And how do you guys look at the fact that you even got first place in this group? Well, when groups got drawn, we were like, either us or HQ is going to get through and we expected EDG to go through. I mean, I didn't, I don't mean that they, we would think they were just going to beat us super hard or whatever, but it, it, it was a realistic prediction. But coming into this week, we kind of hoped for a second just to beat the HQ and then uh, keep going game after game. But I don't know, like today we all played really well. Like I don't think we, we played this well in a really long time. <laughs> and I didn't really... <laughs> I didn't really expect to get first place, but once we got into the games against EDG, we realized that they're kind of like just easy games, so we just went with that. Oh, it's BM. <laughs> um, yeah, but it did seem that once that you found a way to beat EDG, you could just now do it two times in a row. How important was that mentally? Well, I think it's mostly that um, we figured them out as a team, so we knew how to pick and ban against them, and because of it, we just, I know it was, e uh, well, it wasn't super easy, but, you know, it was very close games, actually, but I, I think we played good against them. And the uh, mental boost is actually insane here, yeah. because I won against Clear Love, so I'm a happy boy. <laughs> <laughs> we can see that. Uh, a word maybe for Ryu today. He had some fantastic games. You had a fantastic game here in the end as well. But you guys are always talking so much about Prolly. What exactly did he do in the break that you guys recapped and had a much better mid to late game here? I mean, he motivated us, he made pick and ban for us, yada yada and stuff like that. So, uh, no, no joke, he, he, did, he did good, like his pick and ban I think today was really good, but I think all of us together as a unit, we played really well today. I think the most important thing is that H2K promised us ice creams in Chicago, <laughs> so that was like big boost to our power. Yeah, um, one question maybe about that, what does Prolly say when you have a 50-50 Baron and you definitely can't have it stolen, Jankos? What's the strat? I mean, well, I stole the Elder Drake from Clear Love, you know, so yeah, then yeah. I didn't want him to be sad, so I just gave him the Baron. No, All right. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was really close. I, I misplayed a bit. Like, I have a lot of damage as well on Nashor, and I shouldn't get... Like, he shouldn't be able to steal it, but he did, so well played, you know? Yeah, uh, you guys made it first place in the group. That puts you in a really good position going in the quarters. The weight of the European hope is on your shoulders. Jankos, you said you could go to quarters. <laughs> You're now in quarters, and you could get a very, very favorable draw. So what do you both think uh, are the realistic goals here? I mean, depending on our quarters, I think if we play like we did today, I think we can get through quarters and into semifinals and maybe even more. It just depends on uh, what HTK shows up. Like if it goes like in the first week of falls and we just uh, play like so bad, then I don't really have any expectations. But if you play like we did today, I think we can go at least uh, through semifinals. I think HTK said that in New York we get pizza. So <laughs> I think we can win, for sure. All right, do it for the pizza. Uh, H2 what? H2 cake. Yes. Oh H2K. my god. All right. Uh. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it. H2 K first place in the group at the end of day two here. Uh, Dash, wrap it all up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shox. And I will say, from personal experience, New York pizza is worth winning for. So they have it right in terms of motivation for the players. Good. But H2 K, a 4 and 0 day to get the first seed in the group. Starting at one and two, you know, a lot of us were looking at, all right, well, EDG, again, so that expected number one seed, and then H2K was gonna have to do a lot of work just to surpass AHQ, and they blow everyone's expectations out of the water. Isn't that both the fantastic thing and the most annoying thing about H2K <laughs> is that you can't really predict this coming into the day. You can say, yeah, I think they can be better than AHQ, you know, they can get that second seed, but they also had to win a potential tiebreaker then. And they just show up big time, and EDG doesn't show up at all. Honestly, I was so disappointed with the draft and with the play in game. Clear love Lee Sin, like, what is that? It didn't work at all. He stole Baron. He did steal Baron, <laughs> right. He stole Baron. Right, that was the saving grace of our what just extended the game, at least for a bit of time. But ultimately, H2K still come out on top. I mean, looking at the picks and bans here this time around, again, Ryu not shaken, having to go up against Pawn, because that's what kind of the lane that we were focused on a little bit. And then, of course, Oduwamne 
finally securing uh, the rumble into an Echo. Been a while since we've seen that. Thoughts on Mouse's Echo? Yeah, the Echo, it seemed like they wanted it in the team fights, but they really could never find a champion that Mouse was effective on. I actually thought they'd go for a rally because then at least he's winning the lane. And Deficio kept talking to me during the game, and I agree with him. When is that team composition for EDG supposed to power spike? Because I don't see any moment in the game where it's superior to what H2K has right there. We've seen good Aurelian Soul comps with Aurelian Soul and a Hyper Carry. But if you put him with a Jin, there's just not a way of formulating a team fight where you can actually have the right type of appeal. And I loved H2K's draft, but I, I really hated EDG's draft. Yeah, what are your oh. thoughts on this matchup here, Clement? Well, actually, I think that... The uh, if you look at H2K's draft, they have such good siege and, sieging comp, but they put a Dominate on the side lane for so long. They could have finished that game a lot earlier. Overall, I, I feel happy for H2K, but I feel a lot worried for them too. It kind of feels like a center dunking on a point guard. He's not winning because he's of ball handling. He's winning because he's taller. And that's basically how they won their big game. Like, they just crushed the lanes. Macro-wise, not so sure. <laughs> they crushed in lanes by an absurd amount yeah. in almost all of those games. That's the most impressive thing. When they're talking about everyone played well, they're absolutely right. And it's to a point that I don't think anyone has ever gone 4-0 on the last day of a group because that requires you had a poor week one and then <laughs> yeah, undefeated and enough to get a tiebreaker. But 4-0, and zero, I don't know when the next time we're going to see that is. And yep. I think also, like, it's really hard to say, oh, HK, you know, they need something here and here and there. And I'm sure they do, but so does almost every other team at Worlds so far. I think SKT, before they play Flash Wolves, where the team were like playing pretty well, you know? Mm -hmm. Then to play Flash, Flash Wolves and Fager gets ganked five times in mid and dies, and like, ugh, SKT actually also makes a lot of mistakes. So every team at Worlds so far have issues. Strong laning phase in this meta, though, that will push you quite far. Well, that's why I think Odoamne's uh, answer there is not unreasonable in that, hey, if we actually play as well as we did today in quarterfinals, there's no reason why we can't go to semis, then who knows even further than that. I do want to take a look at our one replay for this game, 30 minutes in. This is where H2K really did seize control of the game. Yeah, and they've been kind of baiting around Baron for such a long time, and to finally find a pick, good exhaust comes in the end, and actually a fine kick from Clearlove, and that means Mako just dive, but he gets... Of course, uh, a Syndra down as well. But then this fight here, well, that's where Aurelian Soul really adds zero value. Yeah, and Otto Omne had terrific position off the teleport right there, and Deft was late to the fight. And you could see EDG was not actually synchronizing Deft kind of behind the Aurelian Soul, and they weren't able to set up proper fight lines. Echo was diving way in the back. Mouse and Clearlove really played the end of this fight poorly. They couldn't quite get Otto Omne. And even though we see them chasing down Deft, Mouse actually re-engages Forgiven down on the bot side and ends up completing the ace. So really, everyone on H2K was individually performing on such a high level today. Yeah, of course, that gold graph does show a couple dips, and that's where we were throwing a little bit of criticism towards H2K in that maybe a few more things they could have sure. cleaned up. Yeah. But ultimately, again, in terms of improvements from week one to week two for this team, it's just yeah. astronomical. It is insane, and it's simply... Uh, instead of making the big mistakes they made in week one, where they still won the laning phase, but then in the mid game, they would like go for a push on a tower and get caught out, or they would start a Baron and then not really know what to do, fight or, or go for the Baron itself and lose the fight right after, and then they would actually lose the game from it. Uh, we just saw a much better team, no level one phase checks against EDG, and then we actually got to see mm -hmm. Vander and Forgiven beat Deft and, and Mako in that yep. 2v2 lane. Pretty yeah. easily, honestly. That's the other thing. I'd really love to go back and watch the very beginning of that lane because we looked down there and it was 11 CS to 1 at one point in that. So they won some type of early trade exceptionally well. And the Caitlyn is going to be something people have to contest away from Forgiven because he's getting more and more comfortable pushing up safely on that champion. All right, player of the game here, though, going to Oduwamne on that rumble. We saw a couple really key ultimates putting out the damage, particularly down near that Elder Dragon when uh, both Mako and uh, Clearlove were caught out. Yeah. yeah. And like he actually took two bans from EDG. Like this is a team or H2K, you can't have any weak lanes or they're gonna run you over. And Adomne played this game really, really well. I think his teleports were really on point and his ultimates too. They really cut the zones out very perfectly. Yeah, and I think Odomne shows that he adds way more value than someone like Mouse. I know that's not a big compliment right now because Mouse is playing so poorly, but EDG has to ban the enemy top laner and still pick something that Lose his lane. Mouse <laughs> maybe can survive on. Yeah, he will lose lane, but have some value later. And there's still something like Rumble available. He picks a Rumble and he carries on it. Mouse runs around on Echo and does absolutely nothing. All right, so the win for H2K, putting them in the first seed. And EGG going to slot in at number two. Jat, I want to take a step back now with two groups entirely completed here and talk about expectation versus reality coming into this tournament. We had a lot of regional, regional rather expectations about LCK and LPL prob probably going to be the most dominant regions coming in. And hey, look, all of a sudden we've got, yes, of course, Rocks Tigers and EDG making 
getting it through, yep. but not in as dominant fashion as expected. And then H2K and Albus Knox showing up big. Yeah, both Rocks and EDG played a group stage game that if they lost, they would have been out of the tournament. And that's unthinkable considering they were actually one and two in most power rankings. And we had all these preconceived notions as far as the regional strength coming in. I'm not willing to write Korea off yet because Rocks has been notorious for being slow starters or having trouble under pressure. But the Chinese teams, especially a couple years in a row now, not being able to perform on a high level. And it seems like there's just this mess of regionalism going on below Korea right now. And we really don't know what to expect, except on a team-by-team -team basis. Yeah, because it's kind of funny. I think we all did this coming into the tournament. We looked at EDG dominating in the LPL, and we were like, okay, this team is really good. They're beating some very good teams in the LPL as well. So we're going to put them a tier above some of the top NA teams, top EU teams, top LMS teams. But they've shown right now they don't deserve to be a tier above, honestly. So the LPL top teams, they're equal with everyone else except for the Koreans. And that's because we have SKT and Rocks Tigers, not because of Samsung. And that's why I feel like right now, there is no region that is super dominant where you look at like six teams in that region, you go like, these six are much better than everyone else. I actually think it's super even across the board, but the top, top teams in Korea are still better than the rest. All right, well, with all four of our game or all of our games rather completed on the day, Group C has been decided. H2K and EDG have emerged victorious and will advance to the knockout stage. INTZ and AHQ have been eliminated from Worlds 2016. Now, though, we have a roster update affecting Sunday's Group B play. Imaze Road has been suspended for his team's first game Sunday due to verbally abusive behavior in ranked games over the last few weeks. For full details, you can find the official ruling on lollysports.com. Now, tomorrow's schedule, we're back a little earlier, so tune in at 1 p.m. Pacific as Group D goes into battle to decide the next two quarterfinalists to emerge from the group stage. We kick off the day with Samsung Galaxy going head-to-head -head with TSM. Group D teams will play all of their remaining games tomorrow, and ties will be decided in best of one uh, tiebreakers immediately following the final scheduled match of the day. Gentlemen, before we say goodbye to our audience, looking at these teams tomorrow, this was already a tight group coming in, but I think the last two days have proved that we can't, we can't necessarily know what's going to happen. What are your thoughts? What are the key matchups that you're looking for? Ooh. It's all about who shows up on the day. That's the thing. It is the most stressful group, which is insane to say, considering we had tiebreakers for first place and elimination game happen in both of these first two games. But that would have been the group where I expect to see a tiebreaker coming out. And I think Splice is the team that can upset a lot of these, these people. Because if you drop one game to Splice, it's likely that can just drop you out of the tiebreaker scenario. So every team has to sure. be completely on their game in all three of their games tomorrow. I'm really looking at RNG because I think, again, they have so much potential in the way they're playing, but they make so many of these mistakes they don't have to, and they gamble a lot both in pick and ban phase, but also in game. I think RNG, if they play like, if they have like an H2K run from today, they can look super, super dominant, secure that first seat. But I think the coolest thing about the group is this is the only one where, if you are H2K, now we talked about it before, if you look at like potential second seats you can face, it's really only the Group D teams you're somewhat afraid of if it's like RNG, TSM, or Samsung, because it's Albus Knox Luna from one group. It's going to be the Flash Rules or C9, I think, from, from Group B. And I think H2K on a good day can definitely take down those guys. So they're going to look at this group and say, whoever gets second seed here can really challenge everyone else. All right, what about you for Clement? Uh, uh, final thoughts on Group D playing tomorrow? Well, I think it's like, personally, I really want RNG to show up and piggybacking on Deficio's point, I actually think they will. I think the H2K story shows that if you have strong laners to begin with, actually the macro bane isn't that big of an issue. You can fix it up over the weekend, and H2K has shown that so far. So I just want to see like the, the, the bot lane there from Uzi Yai just dominate like Forgiven did today. All right, a small preview of what's to come tomorrow. That's time for us to call tonight, but stay right here because Quick Shot, Clement, and Spawn will be back to recap all the day's action on Worlds tonight. Now for myself, the cast of the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.